right, well, since I've dug a hole for myself already, I might as well take a bit more of a chance. I mean, I think people are probably tired of seeing videos about the coronavirus and Trump and, and all of that, so I thought I'd take a chance. If you change your mind... Anyway, um, once you see Infinity, there's really no going back. One night when I was 12, I became very sick. Very high temperature. And I was given NyQuil, which made me hallucinate. And at the time, I thought I was essentially having an out-of-body experience. Whether it really was or not, I mean, whatever. I had an hallucination. And I saw infinity. Again, whether it was real or not doesn't really matter. I saw infinity, and I wasn't able to unsee it. And that's exactly what started getting me away from my Christian upbringing. I started questioning Christianity. I started asking questions at church and Sunday school. The Sunday school teachers were angry at me for asking some of these questions. If I wouldn't have experienced that, if I wouldn't have had that hallucination, I probably would have continued the beliefs of my Christian upbringing well into my 20s. Heck, maybe I would still have been in an Abrahamic religion today. Who knows? In my 20s, I experimented with pagan beliefs and agnosticism and a number of, of other things. But the whole Abrahamic religion thing just didn't make any sense. This notion that humans are the center of the universe. This notion that humans are the most important thing in existence. This notion that there's this anthropomorphic God that sits there and watches and judges everything that we do. Now granted, some of that judgment thing kept with me. I had all these feelings of guilt that continued on. I had, I mean, even to this day, I occasionally still have these feelings of guilt that sometimes come into my mind based on Abrahamic religions. It's hard to kick. When you're raised that way, it's hard to kick. But at least I dismissed most of the crap in the Bible, so. And I don't think any of that would have happened if I wouldn't have had that out-of-body experience or not really out-of-body experience, but the, the hallucination. It's been around 20 years or so since I did a hallucinogen. When I did hallucinogens, they weren't just for, oh, the fun of it. Most of it was for a kind of a spiritual experience. To experience infinity again. And for learning. For learning a whole bunch of things. For instance, I learned how harmonics work with sound deeply learned how harmonics work. I didn't have to take advanced music theory to learn how harmonics work. I mean, I had some music theory behind me already, but, I mean, this just... this just ramped it way up. And after I learned how harmonics work to that degree, the complexity of the music I made, it, it, it went up by a tenfold. It, it was amazing. Amazing musical transformation. You know, another thing, I mean, there's a whole bunch of things I learned, but it's, you know, trying to find the things that are easy to explain, you know, like, another thing is I learned that when we walk heel first, every time our heel hits the ground, it reverberates up our bodies. It reverberates up our backs. And I learned that if we were to teach ourselves to walk sort of ball of our feet first, the, the, the toes first, we could soften the impact that it has on our backs. Now, I'm not saying walking that way is more efficient, because it's certainly not, but we could reduce the impact that it has on our backs. So again, you know, those are, those are just a couple things that I learned out of doing hallucinogens that I can explain easily. Again, I, I learned so much more that are, that's very, very difficult to explain. Philosophical ideas, wow. I mean, those were, those were some heavy-duty ideas. Existence, and so on. But if I didn't have the kind of mind that was open to that sort of thing, I might have just dismissed most of the things that I was 
analyzing. I may not even have analyzed like that, and I would have just went like, oh, look, pretty colors. You know, if, if I would have been closed-minded in that regard, I would have only went with the formal study of things. Now, I'm not saying that the formal study of things is bad. It's the best way we currently know how to teach our, teach other people things, you know? Just don't get me wrong here. There are people who absolutely would deny the intelligence and emotional experiences of other animals. They would say, oh, it's, it's nothing like what humans experience, you know? And they'd believe that strongly until there is absolute proof of otherwise. They would try to claim that only humans experience and have the emotions that we do until there is absolute proof of otherwise. It kind of reminds me of people who say that a human fetus isn't a human because it isn't categorized as one yet. You know, if something hasn't been formally categorized a certain way, it, it doesn't exist. It's not really the case. It's, it, it's weird. There's this weird mindset that's... Now, let me make it clear. I am a pro-choice person. Okay. So let me be clear about that before anyone gets any ideas. But does this mean that the people who already believed that many other animals can have similar experiences as to what humans experience, does this mean they were still wrong until they were proven right? Does this mean they were stupid? That they, are anti, they were anti-science? Does this mean that they were foolish? Does this mean that they were uneducated for going against standard teachings, for going against formal studies, for thinking that uh, there's a number of other animals that are really smart and have occasionally similar emotions to humans? Let me be clear. Okay, I fully understand that humans are pattern matchers, and we often see patterns that aren't there. I mean, we can... We can see patterns in white noise. We can see shapes in clouds. Many patterns we see don't actually exist. I get that. There are also some patterns that we see that aren't that common to see, but they're patterns that we see over and over again. The same patterns. They're consistent. Could they still be invalid patterns? Certainly. But they could also be valid patterns as well. So, let's talk further about formal studies. If we were to judge populations on IQ tests, many people would side with white nationalist talking points. Well, why don't we do that? Well, it's because we know that there's something fundamentally wrong with many of those tests. We know there's more to actual intelligence than what those tests reveal. We know there's cultural differences that change the results of those tests. We know those tests revolve around a particular way of thinking and a particular way of breaking things apart. Why do we pick and choose when to purely go by the scientific method? Why did it used to be okay to claim that crows really aren't that intelligent and that they don't really share information with other crows? At least, not until it was absolutely proven otherwise. Why was that okay? Why was it okay to make an absolute claim that dogs don't like being hugged? So, when it comes to looking at the universe and all the systems therein, and looking at the basic building blocks under a microscope, and the systems there as well, I think that there are some similarities. There are some reasonable patterns we can draw when we look at those things. Could I be wrong? Most certainly! But for now, I think everything is related. If I'm proven wrong, so be it. I'm not a stubborn person about that. If I'm shown proof, I'll go, okay. I'll change the way that I think about that stuff. But I'm not going to strongly believe that there's no connection at all until it's proven that there is a connection. Just like I'm not going to believe that animals never feel a similar thing that humans feel, that, that animals never experience things that, that humans experience, that animals never contemplate things. I mean, where do people get this idea that animals never contemplate life? That they never philosophize anything? How, how, how are you getting that proof? 
How are you, how are you coming to that conclusion? Oh, that animals never feel regret, right? You know, and about any of this, could I be totally wrong? Certainly, absolutely. But for now, I'm going to keep an open mind. For now, I think the universe is infinite, and that it goes through cycles of contraction and expansion. I personally think that there have been an infinite number of Big Bangs, and that there will continue to be an infinite number of Big Bangs. This is what I currently believe, or this is what I'm very open to. If I'm proven wrong, so be it. But I'm not going to limit my scope of thinking to what formal study dictates. Again, I have no problem admitting when I'm wrong. If I was stubborn in that area, then yes, this could be a, a pretty big problem. There are indeed a lot of stubborn people out there. I, I hope I'm not one of them. I, I, I seem to be fully admitting when I'm wrong about things, so... Anyway... <laughs>